Hello. Thank you. Good afternoon. We are all here because we are the elites of society, the best educated, the privileged, and uh, perhaps we consumed incredible amount of resources to educate ourselves and to be where we are. But the most comforting thing is that we are all here because we have vast amount of knowledge and skills and we want to do something about society and the challenges of society and we want to protect the planet. So I'm really comforted about that. I think speaker after speaker in the morning uh, has given us the statistics that and the numbers that uh, our food production system is not sustainable, it's not efficient, it is not, uh, it is wasteful. Uh, we produce and waste about 40% of our produce between farm and all the way to supermarkets and restaurants and in homes. Uh, so our diets are also su not sustainable. So today, I'm going to give you an alternative uh, source for solving a number of these uh, uh, issues, uh, food and nutritional security issue, amid the pressure of and the, uh, the negative impacts of climate change. Because I think business as usual, it is not going to do it for feeding and meeting the requirements of 10 billion people. So, so it is a real jump from robot to insect science, uh, but uh, this, is, uh, this is how it is. So insects are abundant. They are very close to us. They live with us. Everybody relates to it. They, but they are, the majority of them really do things, good things for us. They clean up our mess uh, by degrading our waste. They are hard workers on the farm. Uh, and providing essential uh, ecosystem services like pollination. They, they are really uh, important in the landscape, but they are also, uh, uh, they play a critical role in the food wave. But some of them, uh, a very small mi my, 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 my minority also, they are deadly. They contribute to, they transmit a number of uh, deadly diseases that change the, the course of history, like malaria, dengue, yellow fever. They also steal food from us by uh, consuming a vast majority of our crops if uh, they go unchecked. But today I want to tell you about, uh, about edible insects. So be open-minded. And so, so about two billion people around the world consume insects, actually, traditionally. So this is not something that we have invented. They are delicacies. About 2,000 species are actually described as edible insects, and about 30% of that in Africa. So the vast majority of this is actually collected from the wild, and often by uh, women and children while guys sit and enjoy eating them. <laughs> so, uh, but a few countries like Thailand have also mainstreamed them and, uh, uh, and farmed them. So these are really good alternatives. These are really beautiful colors. These are some of the edible insects that I think any top chef would like to, to put uh, on your plates, nice color. So I think uh, our diet is not sustainable. The beef co consumption per person uh, per year has almost doubled between 1960, the 1960s and the 2014. Uh, and so this is also at a production rate that exceeds, uh, exceeded the population size. So this is re really not sustainable. So, and the cattle also consume about 30% of the crops that we produce. We hydrate them with a huge amount of fresh water. So uh, we clear land to uh, forest to produce uh, the grain, the protein source and so on. And uh, they are somebody, I think it was Bill Gates who said that if cows are country, they are the, numbers, uh, the uh, number three uh, uh, major green, uh, green gas, greenhouse gas emit, uh, uh, emitters. So this is not sustainable. 
so please, I'm not saying that let's get rid of meat, uh, but uh, this is not something I think uh, we can continue doing it. So if we look at uh, the protein source of insects, some of these insects uh, we have dusted, all these bars in green, are the crude protein content of some of these insects. They outperform most of them, the, uh, the most uh, important and uh, rich source of uh, uh, protein source like fish and other plant products. So this is really great source. But not only that, the quality of protein, the protein is also really high quality because the majority of these are also loaded with limiting amino acids such as lysine, tryptophan, and methionine. So this is a really healthy protein. But they, only, they also produce a lot of minerals, zinc, iron, uh, riboflavin, the uh, calcium, the, uh, all kinds of, uh, uh, of uh, essential uh, minerals and compounds, carotenoids. And for example, zinc, so red meat is considered as the best, best source of uh, zinc, but a lot of these edible insects actually outperform them by about uh, up to 20%, 20-fold. So this is really amazing. So I don't have to show you slide after slide. This, I think you got the, the idea. Not only that, uh, some of these also edible insects like desert locusts, this is a really obnoxious pest. A whole swarm of locusts can come and just terrorize a whole village by wiping out the crops. But they are also amazing little factories. They produce uh, therapeutic sterols by consuming just vegetation multiplying a tiny amount of the sterols that are in the plant with some mechanism up to 20 to uh, 40 folds they multiply them and produce five additional new sterols. So this is really, really good healthy. Uh, they, uh, comp these are healthy compounds that reduce uh, cardiovascular risk in, in humans. So once this paper was published, we were inundated with a request by journalists to come and test. So we, they have eaten a lot of our uh, lab uh, uh, locusts. But the other one is a picture that my daughter sent me from Mexico in a Mexican restaurant where uh, fried insects were served on guacamole. She told me they ate this and ordered three more. And it was nice and crunchy, uh, so I was proud of her. So be open-mind. I think at the end of this, you'll be uh, also testing some delicacies. Huh? <laughs> but I think uh, while you can understand about the edible parts, the protein source, the meat source of protein, but uh, many of us never imagined insects as an uh, oil source. The oil is not only the the addiction to meat, we are also addicted to oil. The oil, the edible oil market is enormous. That uh, the, the, edible, the global edible uh, oil market is expected to grow from the current 83 billion to 130 billion in the next five years. The omega-3 fatty acids, the market value in the by 2025 is expected to grow by three billion. That is enormous. The cosmetic industry co consumes vast amount of oil for moisturizers, skin care products, and so on. That is even enormous. Last year's figure was about 135 billion. So where is all this oil going to come? From which land? From which weather? So insects can contribute this. They produce a massive amount of oil, but also they are rich in uh, omega-3. Uh, we compare them uh, with plant-based oils, and uh, the insect oils are superior. They, they also contain massive amounts of vitamin E, and by the way, vitamin E is used also in, by the cosmetic industry to infuse lotions with a ma and antioxidants also to and market them anti-wrinkling, anti-aging lotion. But I guarantee you, if we are fortunate enough to live long enough, we are all going to wrinkle. We are all going to shrivel like a, a squeezed uh, um, 
aluminum foil. So, but in the meantime, that we are <laughs> we are enriching uh, the the uh, the uh, cosmetic industry. But I think uh, the most important is that uh, these uh, insects are loaded with vitamin E, and vitamin E are antioxidants. We looked at also anti other antioxidants that are useful for uh, our system. And a lot of these edible insects have uh, between three and four different uh, antioxidants that are really useful. So this is a, a system that gives us an uh, all-rounded uh, all system. The, we raise these insects on, basically on garbage on waste from the kitchen, waste from restaurants, waste from the breweries. People drink beer, thank God, so we have a lot of waste. Huh? So we can raise them with that, efficiently convert uh, 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 the, the waste into protein. Uh, we extract oil. We extract also uh, this, some of the uh, feed also, the, uh, the insects also as animal feed. So, so this is all around a very sustainable, uh, system. What we have to do is open our mind and, and remove the yak, yak factor. But for those who don't want to eat, there are also factories that process the insects, extract what are really important and, and use them as additives in your food, in our food. But one thing I haven't told you about is also that once we use a waste to raise these insects, and they pulverize all the, uh, the waste, we harvest the insect, that's also uh, the pulverized compost is a very, very high quality fertilizer, uh, which has exactly the same effect as the commercially available NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So this is enormous advantage for the planet, really great advantage for all of us. And uh, based on our work, the uh, Kenyan government and the Ugandan government became the first two African countries to authorize insects as animal feed. So we will be cleaning our environment uh, this way. So I think, uh, I hope I have uh, made the case. This is one way of effective way, efficient way of uh, using our resources. In the spirit of, uh, of promoting and protecting, uh, what is it called? Um, what do you call it? This um, uh, thinking, uh, free thinking. Free thinking, is that what it says in the uh, thing? So I think while I ask you now, knowing what you know about insects, to be kinder and gentler to insects and to create the environment to nurture them, not to teach our kids to stomp on them and kill them. Uh, so I think we have also to be kinder and gentler to our fellow humans. So we have to break the, the wall of bigotry. So, uh, so some of these things, just when you think about, I think the, the absurdity of bigotry and discrimination is that this is not our doing. We are getting discriminated on facts that is not our doing. I didn't choose to be Ethiopian. I didn't choose to be born to a poor family in a village in Ethiopia. I didn't choose to be a female. I certainly, certainly didn't choose to be short. If I had a choice, I would like to be taller. So the absurdity is that we are, why are we discriminating people based <coughs> on facts that are not our own doing? So let's judge people by what they do, by our, their choice. And uh, I chose to be a scientist. I chose to be a productive scientist. And uh, I chose to do things for humanity. Thank you so much. OK. So we are going to serve insects. Thank you. So I have to eat them. This is, I think, grasshopper. So OK. <laughs> It's delicious. Very good. Thank you.